Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am the Desert Claw, and today we get to learn a little bit more about our friends, the Doppelgangers. But before I get started, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Subscribing really helps the growth of the channel, and let's uh, let's get to it. Oh, don't let me forget, if you're an anime-only viewer and you don't want to be spoiled, there will be spoilers. And if you're not caught up with the manga, go get caught up. Okay, so, um... This chapter starts out with the return of Joker, and he uh, he he come, becomes like a messenger of sorts, like a messenger of hope. Before I get into that, uh, last chapter in this one, we got to learn a little bit more about doppelgangers. Uh, since the key has, has activated and Adola is now mixed, uh, doppelgangers can be seen uh, more often. And we've known for a long time that when someone either turns into an infernal or a demon or becomes a uh, second or third generation pyrokinetic it's because their doppelganger has tried to encroach on them this is prior to the veil being basically removed um we never knew what caused that either it was self-inflicted by a bug which means it just forced it and to me that removed the veil even more and allowed the uh the the, the doppelganger to encroach or it just happened naturally and uh, I can't really talk to the bug part yet. There's stuff about that I'm still thinking about, but let's go back to the beginning when you first saw the family that it was basically infernalized. The only surviving member was the daughter. And so you find out that the mother infernalized and then later the father infernalized and then you see the daughter thinking she's next, right? This is before we have any explanation of all this stuff. Well. Fast forward real quick to the last two chapters. We see one guy lose it and think the world is about to end. And as soon as he says that or feels that, his doppelganger just shows up and gives him a bear hug and, and takes him out. Now, prior to the cataclysm, um, this guy would probably just infernalize or turn get, become a pyrokinetic kinetic, if I think he had the will to live. I think that's the key. I think if you if you get to the point where you are being like back when Nataku was given the bug, uh, it becomes a, a test of your willpower and your will to live and have hope to keep yourself, but then inherent powers. If you don't, then you infernalize, or in this case, now that that the veil is gone, you die because the doppelganger's whole job is to take your place. It's your inverse. So if you are you are despairing in the world and you no longer want to live, the doppelganger will happily, who is your inverse, your 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 reflection, take your place because they have plenty of hope to want to live and they have they want to take over your life and they want to live basically. This chapter, uh, you see some uh, one of Hibana's angels give in to despair, and just she uh, it's off panel. I don't know. I'm assuming she's dead. One of the angels are dead, but it, it's you just see bubbles say you know thought uh, uh, text bubbles them screaming. So we don't know. Uh, maybe someone intervene. I believe all the angels are pyrokinetic, so at least they could fight back. Clearly, you can fight back against your do your uh, your doppel. Conroe did it, so we'll see. But this is to me remove the mystery. So now it's it's your mental state that causes you to either infernalize or. Summon your to summon your doppelganger, and before the the veil was dropped, this would just summon your doppelganger, and they would try to reach across the the veil, and just by them doing that, could touch your your body or your soul enough to infernalize or whatever. So, what's interesting about this too is the evangelist has uh, orchestrated this narrative so well that having something as as hopeful as a holy soul church. Their main mission is to provide you solace in the afterlife, basically. Like, the Fire Force can't protect you from becoming a, an Infernal. They can only take your soul, basically, and pray for you and that so you that you go on to the beyond and become part of the sun or whatever. It's just to give comfort, but it doesn't, it doesn't remove people's despair. It doesn't give people hope. It gives people the idea that it's inevitable that they become infernalized, but at least I'll know my soul will be taken care of after I'm gone because the fire force is here. So they are, have become an opposite beacon in my mind 
I'm not saying they're bad people, but I'm saying that they are part of the narrative they always have been. And this is why the evangelist is a cruel, cruel, calculating deity or whatever the heck it is. We still don't know uh, what the evangelist is. If the evangelist came from the first earth, which has been now confirmed to be the, the current sun, we don't know. So, uh, or maybe the evangelist is just a, you know, it's a, it's a Lovecraftian type god that just moves from planet to planet, devouring and turning into sun. So, we don't know. But uh, this, to me, has answered this question, and it'll be interesting to see how far it goes. Uh, I'm still curious, like, what spawns a demon? Uh, not really clear on that. Maybe that's just the, the, you know, maybe they, maybe demons will show up, or maybe they're a different class, a doppelganger. Don't know yet, but uh, it'll be really interesting. So, Joker shows back up, and he's now the beacon of hope. He's... He's figured it out, and he's the most optimistic character that's on the screen right now. And it's interesting, too, because Joker's life is not... If anybody should fall to despair, it should be this guy. I mean, this guy was brainwashed, grew up to be an assassin, was sexually assaulted by his superior, uh, cast out, exiled... Everything under the sun that anybody who, who with a weaker will would he'd be uh, infernalized or fighting his own doppelganger right now. But he shows up and he explains that what despair is and what the, the grand plan is and that the only way to, to stop this is hope. And the white clad and the evangelist knew this because they, it, they intervened on Shinra immediately, uh, which tells me there are forces beyond the evangelist's control, probably on the Adola side, that is this countermeasure, but the, the evangelist made sure that the, the evangelist is, uh, I guess you could say, minions made sure that Shinra was not going to be what he was supposed to be, and so he was cast as the basically the, the Satan of the world. And if you go back to right after he beat Raffles and everyone's calling him a devil, and you look at his face, at that point, it, it kind of looks like Shinra gave him to despair, which then cemented himself into being a pillar. What they didn't count on here, and this is the ingenious part of this. So Shinra is your classic mythological savior, right? He was born of divine birth, meaning he had no father, he, like he was born from God's will. He, uh, he had amazing superpowers. He's probably got the most overpowered uh, Adola burst, in my opinion, with his light, uh, light speed, even more powerful than show. Um, his brother was also a second uh, divine birth. But what is more powerful than that archetype? A regular ass dude with no powers that leads a battalion of people to victory. And that is Obi. And Obi is now going to be the symbol of hope to the rest of the world that's still stuck in whatever dimension we are in right now while the pillars are trapped to do what they're supposed to do. And so Joker has now set up Obi to be this light, and everyone's going to rally around Obi. And uh, just like the last video where I live stream, we talked about who's who could potentially die. And I did kind of say Kinawa could, uh, you know, I thought Obi would, could be possibly on a list, but uh, I don't think Hinawa will let Obi die. So if something happens, I think Hinawa is going to step in there. So Hinawa has a, a death flag, in my opinion. But everybody basically says they're going to follow Obi and they're going to get in contact with all of the rest of the Fire Force and they're going to they're going to start pushing this message of hope. And uh, that then that comes to Arthur. Uh, you you know the previous chapter that uh, Dragon was not getting what he wanted out of Arthur and Dragon had said that Arthur had fallen into despair. And uh, Arthur, I don't think he fully agreed, but he was frustrated with himself. And then he, he basically calls uh, Vulcan Merlin, and so he's really trying to dial down on his delusion, and he needs his wisdom, and he's now coming to say he needs to he needs to rely on his teammates, and because he knows Dragon's going to come back. And then Dragon is, is basically out in space like cars from JoJo Part 2, and uh, he just, uh, he, he at first he's like, I don't feel like I'm going to go back, and he's just drifting, and then... He thinks about Arthur's determination, and he's like, nope, I gotta go back for one last fight. And uh, 
He responds wings out of his back and starts flying in, which to me kind of backs up my theory that Dragon has is not has has not and has never been human, and that Dragon is just a denizen of Adola who has been dreamed up by people because Adola is a collective unconscious and he was just able to cross over like the evangelist did and I'm pretty sure fairy is probably the same way um but uh you know who for all you know Arthur dreamed up dragon as this great nemesis and dragon made his call and then across the rift and dragon's entire purpose is to meet his rival his like romantic rival you know the knight versus the dragon so we're, we, a lot of us are disappointed that Arthur versus Dragon was kind of lame. Well, the real one's coming now. So uh, I feel like we're gonna be we're gonna be with the real the, the people who's left in the world for a while before we find out what's happening with the pillars more. Um, I do know next chapter based on the way its title is going to be based on Sumire, but I don't think it'll be present. Uh, it'll probably be uh, how what Sumire is and how she became to be. So. We'll have to see what we don't know but uh yeah i'm really uh really excited to see what happens next really see some arthur versus dragon glad joker's back um oh back on my do doppelganger thing too it, uh i think it makes sense to why benny morrow's crew or his his town have been targeted so much by demons and stuff like that because they're like the most optimistic people on the planet as someone as soon as somebody in infernalized it's a flipping party you know um so that probably was a giant threat to the evangelist plan and if i'm if i'm right that there's another force in adola that is opposing the evangelist perhaps that's the reason for benny maru that because benny maru is not only just a powerhouse but also a symbol of hope for his people not just the empire but his people alone so that's probably a giant threat and uh benny maru is so powerful that the evangelist really can do crap about it We'll have to see but all right i'm out of theories for this week so uh tell me what you thought about this tell me what you're excited about in the next chapter where do you think we're you're seeing everything going are you excited to see arthur versus dragon finally uh what is is uh, arthur and merlin gonna get uh, cooped up now i don't know but uh yeah so go ahead and uh leave a like once again subscribe for more content uh hit to the comic section let's talk about fire force and i hope you all have a good one peace